what can you do afterward you have uploaded your input other pictures on video can you guide us through some examples and what are the things that can be done with Kiri? you can use one of our most unique and powerful features in Kiri engine called 3d gs to mesh to convert the 3d gaussian splatting to mesh and then you can export a mesh model uh, to a more familiar workflow for example a real engine for example your random you know you know your regular you know mesh workflow in blender and then you know work on that that's uh, yeah, that's actually really cool, and uh, and actually we have a lot more exciting features coming this this year. So about 3D Gaussian spotting, so I'm so excited. So you mentioned okay, I've got this beautifully represented photorealistic car. Let's imagine, right? Because yeah. we are saying hard to scan. Yeah. Let's pick a car. Now I can turn yeah. that car into a mesh. That's gonna turn pretty good, right? Yeah. Unlike yeah. anything that I would ever get from a photogrammetry scan because of those exactly. reasons. Right. Exactly. So I use, in a way, Gaussian splatting as a tool to give me a mesh of a 3D model that would be impossible to scan. Let's imagine. That's definitely true. And actually, because of that, we had a dedicated scanning method called featureless object scan. Um, yeah, actually, it uses the same method as 3D Gaussian 3D GS to mesh. Uh, but you know, it's more straightforward. You know, telling people, oh, you can actually 3D scan featureless object using this feature and get this you know, a mesh of a car that was impossible. Before. Yeah, and I've got literally a mesh of a water bottle uh, and a Aww. metal bottle as well. And they were like pretty spot on. So again, can testify, it's true. Now, the point is, then what? In a sense, I am now st stuck between these two words, right? I want the photorealism of mm -hmm. the splats, but yeah. I want it to behave it like a mesh so that for example let's go back to the to the car and i'm here yeah. i'm pushing a little boundaries here what if i want the door to open yeah uh that's a really harsh question and the short answer is uh you probably won't get what you want in a short span of time um Right, so when you think about just, you know, the operations you want to achieve, like, you know, so you want to scan a car and you want the door to open, right? Uh, even before 3D Gaussian spotting, right? We have photogrammetry there for like 10 years, more than 10 years. And it wasn't even that achievable on photogrammetry, unfortunately. Like, if you want to achieve, you know, movable doors from a car and still in a really good quality, um, pretty much your only option is to 3D model the car and door and the rig it yourself. Unfortunately, I like I foresee still going to be uh, one of the hardest you know tasks to toggle on uh, for three D scanning. Um, so people probably won't see product level, you know, consumer level good. Um, how do you how do you put it? Like 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 separated you know three D scan from a from a three D scan scene. So yeah, so if you want have a you know really good looking car with a moving door, then you pretty much. Uh, 3D modeling is still your best job. But let's imagine, though, that I want, for example, to have a static object in my scene, then yes. I could still, for example, could I add physics to it, for example? Oh, absolutely. Is that, okay. Oh, so let's, let, let's look at the question like this. Imagine yep. that I get these splats and I yep. get the mesh with it. What are the yep. things that I can still do besides moving a part of ah. it that we're saying it's not really feasible? Ah. I see. So actually, we've seen people because right now Kira Engine can produce both mesh and 3D GS file from a 3D Gaussian capture. Uh, we've seen what people have been doing is they download both mesh version and the 3D Gaussian spotting version. And we know the 3D Gaussian spotting version has a better you know visualization. Uh, you know, but the mesh version will give you more physics out of it. So what people are doing in Blender, what every engine, or even on some even more hardcore like simulation software. It's like they pretty much they import a mesh as a transparent object and then put 3D Gaussian on top of it. And then they run simulations, they run physics, you know, they run hardcore you know, uh, calculations. And then all of a sudden you have the same you know, simulation effects, but on a more you know, visually represented way as a 3D Gaussian spotting. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So you, you mentioned this example, and I'm yeah. curious, what else are people doing with these models? Uh, maybe you can tell us, because I imagine there Absolutely. are thousands of people scanning, and what are some of the use cases you have experienced? They're totally two different use cases. I agree. Uh, actually, I, agree. I should tell you both. Um, you know what, actually, I'll tell the full, full story. If you enjoyed this conversation, you can read the rest of the interview on XRI Spotlight by clicking the first link in the episode description. 
If you enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to the newsletter to get weekly interviews like this one directly in your inbox and access to a list of tools and apps that allow you to experience Gaussian splatting in VR on Quest or Vision Pro. If reading is not your thing, you can keep watching here on YouTube. Till next time.